Okay, so what I gave you before was a real quick overview of functional programming at a high level, comparing and contrasting with object-oriented programming, and I made a few promises to you that this functional stuff is really cool, but I didn't really give you any detailed examples that you could probably follow if you didn't already know what it was. So let's go ahead and give some more detail now. What we're going to do at this point is talk about lambda expressions and method references. And these are some of the foundational functional programming features in Java 8. There's a few more that we'll talk about either later today or next time, but these are the starting point. So we'll talk about lambda expressions and method and constructor references. And I'll give you a couple of examples that you can look at if you want to see this stuff in action. So what is a lambda expression? Well, a lambda expression is basically an unnamed block of code, which can take parameters. And you can use this to store and pass and execute this code later in a program. So let's take a look and see how this might be used. Here's an example lambda expression, a very simple one that's uh, relevant for our discussion. You could read more about this type of thing here in this link. So what we're doing here is we're making ourselves a new thread. So what we'll talk about this in more detail later, but in Java, if you want to have a computation that runs concurrently with what else is going on, you say new thread, and then you start the thread. And when you do that, that'll go ahead and make a new runtime stack, and it'll start to run some computation at the, at the beginning of the stack, the, the head of the, you know, the top or the bottom, it doesn't really matter whether it goes up or down, it's gonna be basically the top of the stack and it'll start running. So what is the computation that you're going to run? Well, there's a, a bunch of different ways to do it. I'm not gonna bore you with all the old ways of doing things. I'm gonna talk specifically about how you do it with lambda expressions. And this is a lambda expression. And what this is saying is, I want you to start a new thread and I want you to print hello world from that thread and then exit. So it's obviously not a very interesting thread, but it just is enough to give the point. What's interesting here though is what this thing is. This is what's called a lambda expression. And this lambda expression takes no parameters, hence the open close paren. And it defines a separate computation. It'll run in a new thread and just print out hello world. So the stuff here after the arrow is basically the computation that will be performed. Okay, that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, to see why this is cool, it's worth comparing and contrasting it with what you would have had to have done prior to having lambda expressions. And the key thing to note before I show you the battle of way of doing things is just how concise the lambda expression is. And the reason why the lambda expression is concise is because it's only telling you what computation to do. There's no other extraneous syntactic sugar or syntactic vinegar, as it might be better called. Um, because that's been abstracted away. But the only thing you have here is like this arrow, which is pretty easy to type. This is what that code might have looked like before in the dark days of Java and anonymous inner classes, which was the old way of doing things. So if you want to do this the old way, we would say new runnable, open, close, paren, open, curly, brace, public, void, run, open, close, paren, open, curly, brace, system, dot out, dot printland, hello world, blah, 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 right? So all that other stuff there was necessary in order to be able to provide the syntax that earlier versions of Java required in order to express what is a really simple computation, print hello world. And as the, uh, as the icon implies here, you know, that'll give you some carpal tunnel syndrome, right? Make sure you soar, all that extra typing. Now obviously, you know, the problem in software development is not typing, that's not what makes it hard. But every little bit helps, and when you start having to write all this extra code, it kind of blurs or hides from you what's really going on. And that makes the code more difficult to understand and maintain and evolve and so on. So the great thing about lambda expressions is they're really concise because it's just the computation you want. And I'll look at some other examples in a second with you. <clears throat> lambda expressions are really concise, but in some situations, you could be even more concise. And this is something that's called a method reference. So a method reference is an even more compact even easier to read handle or name for a method that already has an existing name. And we'll see there's a bunch of different types of method references. When you have a reference to a static method, you do it a certain way. When it's a refer reference to an instance method of a particular object, you do it another way, and so on and so forth. Reference to a constructor, reference to an instance method of an arbitrary object of a given type, blah, blah, blah. We'll take a quick look here at this example, and I'll show you some code to illustrate this. Now, 
Lambda expressions are more compact than anonymous inner classes, and method references are even more compact than them. So they're really, really compact. Well, let's take a look at an example. Here we've got ourselves an array of strings, just people's names, and these are three different ways we could sort that array using different flavors of Java features. So here's the first way of doing things. This is the old way of doing things using anonymous inner classes, right? The carpal tunnel syndrome inducing verbose way of doing things. So what we do here is we say, I want to sort name array, so arrays.sort name array, and here is the comparator that I want to be used to compare two strings. And in this case, we're going to compare them in a uh, case insensitive way. We're going to lower case them before we compare them. So you can see here, new comparator for string, public int compare, string s, string t, return s dot two lowercase dot compare to t dot two lowercase, blah, 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 right? A lot of typing. So lots of extra syntax. Here's the way to do this with a lambda expression. So in this case, we're going to say arrays.sort, name array, and now we've got this funky little expression here, which is basically defining two variables, or two parameters, of type string, because after all, it's a string array. So this is s and t, and this is basically a, a by function. And that will then go ahead and use s dot compare to ignore case with the parameter t. So we're passing in s and t parameters. There's some syntactic magic that uses what's called type inference to deduce the right types here. And so that's clearly more concise than this. But it turns out, whenever you have stuff that looks like this, where you've got the parameters that are used directly in the lambda, you can go one step further. And that's the example shown here. This is the use of method reference. And I think you'll agree with me when you compare these things side by side that the method reference approach is way more concise and way more intuitive because it's basically saying sort the name array in a way that ignores case. Right? And so you can just sort of read that from left to right. And, and once you know sort of the syntactic variants that they have here for method references, it almost just kind of jumps off the page and reads itself to you. Whereas if you were to try to look at this code, even if you'd written a lot of Java code, you'd be like, okay, comparator, compare, return, two lower, you know, it's just a lot of extra stuff to have to parse through. Yes? Since lambda expressions are so efficient, do anonymous inner classes have, like, are they still useful anymore? Have there been kind of deprecated? Yeah, great question. So the question is, what has happened to the to the venerable inner class, right? You know, has it has it been set, put out the pasture? Do, they, do we put it on an ice flow like the Eskimos and let it drift away when it gets old and, and decrepit? Basically, yes. And what you'll find when you start using Android Studio or IntelliJ or, or other modern IDEs, integrated development environments, what those things will do for you is they will actually, when they spot an inner class, it will come up and say, this can be replaced with a lambda expression, and it'll automatically substitute for you. So at this point, in a modern IDE, if you're refactoring existing code, it'll automatically transform it to the lambda thing, or not automatically, it'll give you the choice of doing it. And so it's great, it just, your code gets a lot smaller. So there really is almost no good reason for using anonymous inner classes anymore. There, there may be a few situations where they have slightly different semantics than lambda expressions, but those are few and far between. But that's a great question. So, not surprisingly, as this implies, it's a really good idea to get in the habit of using the lambdas to, uh, to do these kinds of, th to, to use uh, method references, whatever you can. There's a bunch of different ways to output the results of these kinds of things. So let's assume, again, we have our name array of strings. One way to do things is to simply use the classic printlin method or printline method, where we would say arrays.asList name array that's going to return this as a list, and then we can print a list, and that's what it prints when we print it out. That's one way to do things. Another way to do things is to use Java's new for each loop. Uh, well, it's a for each method. <laughs> um, so for each is a method that does the loop on your behalf without you having to write a loop. So here's a way we could say, make a stream of 
name array. We'll talk more about what that does later. That's a factory method that makes something into a stream. And then for each element in the stream, print the result out. You'll notice this is a method reference right here. System.out colon colon print is a method reference which will be passed to for each, which will then print the results out. So I wanted to show you this here because for each is one of the things you've got to do in assignment 1B. And it's really quite simple to use, and it's useful, although we'll see later there may be other ways to do it that are even cooler under the right circumstances. Okay, so that is the end of the discussion of lambda expressions and method references.